Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to continue um, with um, the playlist um, Unraveling the Apostle Paul. And um, this, what I'm going to talk about today is Paul's background, where he came from, you know, where he was born, um, the world that he was born into, what was there. And um, I always want to uh, refer you back to the playlist and uh, to take a look at what's what I've posted there already. In particular, the one about culture, setting the stage. Um, in that video, I discuss how the culture is a part of our, the very fabric of our flesh, of our thinking process, our, um, the way we rationalize things, um, our thought process. It's um, all embedded from the culture. So uh, this is Paul's background and his birthplace. It's not going to be too long, um, so just stay with me. <laughs> okay, according to scholar George T. Montague, uh, gives us this statement. In AD 5, Paul was born in Tarsus in uh, Cilicia. In Acts 21, verse 39, but Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city which means no insignificant city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. In Acts 22, verse 3, it says, I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. Paul the Apostle, his native name is Shaul Atarsi, which means Saul of Tarsus, commonly known as Saint Paul, born C. 5 AD, Tarsus, Cilicia, Roman Empire. Paul was born in Tarsus, the principal city of uh, Cilicia. Tarsus was a very important city in Paul's day, as it was one of the largest trade centers on the Mediterranean coast. It was a seaport city about 12 miles up the river Sinus, S-Y-D-N-U-S, Sinus, with a harbor that was well protected by natural rock fortifications. The general population at that time in Tarsus was over 250,000 people. Many people came to Tarsus from all over the Roman Empire to live and to work in this particular prosperous city. Tarsus had become a rich city, mainly because of trade. Merchants from Tarsus were well known throughout the Roman Empire. Tarsian merchants were noted for their love of their craft their almost fanatic zeal in their monetary investments in their city's infrastructure. The merchants of Tarsus invested in good roads, education, public health, and city beautification projects. One of the largest sources of income for merchants was the Tarsus Mountains, about 25 miles north of the city. The Tarsus Mountains were rich in minerals and lumber. The mountain slopes were populated by huge herds of black goats, 
From the hair of the goats, a strong cloth was woven called Cilicium. Cilicium was used for many purposes such as cloaks, floor coverings, house partitions, bags to transport corpses, and tents. Throughout the Roman world, Tarsians were known for the quality of their tents. Historian John Pollock had this to say about the popularity of tents from Tarsian craftsmen. Quotes, the black tents of Tarsus were used by caravans, nomads, and armies all over Asia Minor and Syria. Tarsus has been in existence as a city centuries before Paul was born, several hundred years prior to his birth during the period of Alexander the Great. The city was the most influential in Asia Minor. Alexander the Great brought Hellenization. What is Hellenization? I'm going to explain that to you now before I proceed. Hellenization is the Greek thought process, the Greek influence, and the Greek customs. It's the act of Hellenizing or state of being imbued, you know, where something is like pressed into the fiber of your flesh. With Greek ideas or methods, the historical spread of ancient Greek culture. This is why I want you to make sure that you read, you watch that video on um, Greek culture, okay, setting the stage. It's very important. Uh, the historical spread of ancient Greek culture, religion, and to a lesser extent, language over foreign peoples conquered by Greeks or brought into their sphere of influence, particularly during the Hellenistic period, following campaigns of Alexander the Great in the fourth century BC. The results of Hellenization was that elements of Greek origin combined in various forms and degrees with local elements, and these Greek influences spread from the Mediterranean basin as far east as modern-day Pakistan. In modern times, Hellenization has been associated with the adoption of the modern Greek culture and ethnic and cultural homogenization of Greek. You know what homogenizing means is to, you know, mix. Okay, now you know what Hellenization means. I'll read this sentence again. Um, <clears throat> Tarsus has been in existence as a city centuries before Paul was born several hundred years prior to his birth during the period of Alexander the Great. The city was the most influential in Asia Minor. Alexander the Great brought Hellenization, Greek thought, influence, and customs with him when he took over the city and all of Asia Minor. After Alexander's death, one of his gen generals, Seleucus, took over that region, and in, including Tarsus, and proclaimed himself king and established the Seleucidic dynasty that lasted several hundred years. One of the kings in that dynasty, Antiochus Epiphanes, fell in love with the city and recognized how important the city was to his kingdom he gave the citizens virtually anything they wanted. In 170 BCE, the citizens of the city asked Antiochus if they could govern themselves without any outside influence other than Antiochus's own, and he granted them their request. Antiochus gave Tarsus the status 
of Greek city state in 170 BCE and in 64 BCE Rome defeated the Seleucidic dynasty and Tarsus became part of the Roman Empire. And that is all for this video right now. Stay tuned for more.